This is it. We're officially in the med. Woo! <laughs> Going where the fair winds blow, our home is where the waters flow. We'll show you what we've come to know on board while sailing wisdom. Our anchored days here in Gibraltar have all been really, really rough. It's been uh, quite harsh. But the winds have finally calmed down, so we're going to get the anchor up and get out of here and make our way to Sicily. It's a thousand miles to the east. So we're sailing off anchor today. Just unseating the anchor, which is very well dug in after everything. So we are Sicily bound. I don't know whether this is crazy or... No, it's pretty crazy. <laughs> But we, get, we gotta get to Sicily, so here we go. Zero down, 1,000 miles to go to cross the Mediterranean in the winter. So right now we can see three countries. We've got England, we have Spain, and we have Morocco. <laughs> Pretty cool. Well, we've left Gibraltar. We're sailing out through all the container ships and everything, which is uh, really fun. And this is exactly why, even though the exit from the harbor was super easy to do in the dark, we decided not to, because as soon as we come out, there's a lot of giant ships that are very dark colored hulls. So we don't want to do that. Maddie steered and sailed us off the anchor as I cranked that sucker up. And now we are sailing away. <laughs> Sail away, sail away, sail away. Enya, anybody? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Feels good to be back out. Uh, it was kind of a rough anchorage in there, but we actually had a really good time in Gibraltar. Uh, but it was time to leave, and the winter is coming, as they say now. It's gonna be a uh, rough passage, but we are prepared. Last night we did the seemingly impossible and we got laundry, dinner, uploads, and what was the other thing? Provisions. And provisions. Uh, we did all of that in four hours. <laughs> Going from Spain to Gibraltar and oh my gosh, it was crazy, but we did it because we knew we had to get out tonight and it was just so rough in the anchorage that we couldn't get to shore comfortably and uh, we just sucked it up at the end and, and went for it. So as we sail out of the harbor here, it just feels really good that the next time we touch land is going to be in Italy. It's like the ICW being overtaken by a powerboat. Well, this is uncomfortable. Well, I tried radioing him and nobody answered and he almost just ran us over. And it's a huge open harbor. It's not like, you know, confined for space. He's actually stupidly close to all these anchored cargo ships. So, not sure his plan there. And this is why a lot of crashes actually happen in racing with sailboats. When your hulls are really close together and you're moving fast, you get the uh, Venturi effect. It's either Bernoulli or Venturi, I can't remember right now because I'm a little shaken up. And it'll actually just suck your hulls together. So we're being pulled into him quite quickly. And the only thing you, well you have two choices. One of the boats has to haul stern and scoot past the other boat faster than they can collide. Or the other boat just turned 90 degrees to them. So we almost jived. But that's better than uh, getting sucked into him. Yeah. That was stressful. So if you're ever out next to a boat, don't get too close if the two boats have deep hulls because you'll end up uh, being really close friends. So right there, there's a power cat that's putting up a sail. Or a sail cat. <laughs> Let's be honest. But the really cool thing, he looks like a gaff rig sailboat. And it's just so awesome. You know the expression, history repeats itself? So we went from square sails to triangular sails. And they were, you know, horizontal to then fore aft. Then we added spinnakers and all sorts of kites and everything. Literal kites and parachutes that look like square sails again. And then with our triangular sail, we had gaff rigs. And then we went away from gaff rigs. 
and then the battens kept getting bigger, and now the battens are just so giant at the top that they look like gaff rigs again. So it's just really cool how we go ahead and then we go back. And we go ahead and we go back. And even with us, you had rope rigging for millennia, and then you had steel rigging for a couple hundred years, and we're back to rope rigging. It's history. You can learn so much from it. seems like the way that they uh, get their goods imported here is the giant ship anchors out in the harbor and then the, a smaller giant ship comes out, ties up next to it. It's hilarious to see these giant buildings rafting together. And then uh, they must load the small one, the small one takes it into harbor to go to port. Right there is a giant gun from the 1920s, from the 1930s, and it was crucial in World War II. Herbie and I went up to it in a previous episode, and it's gigantic. They used it to take out boats that were trying to enter or leave the Med. It had a range of 12.7 kilometers. So about seven miles or so that it could shoot out across the, the Strait of Gibraltar. And the thing is, the Strait's not that wide, so they pretty much had you. It was a 9.2 inch round <laughs> and it weighed 380 pounds. So. <laughs> so it's crazy to be looking up at it right now and be able to see it and think about being a ship trying to pass it and just having it slowly swivel towards you. That's the end of my thoughts on that. <laughs> and that's why all the German soldiers wore brown pants, because it hides the fear. Earlier I was talking about how we swiftly got everything ready to go in a matter of four hours for this thousand mile crossing. And we were just thinking about how far we've come mentally for a voyage like this. When we first set out from the Chesapeake, our plan was to do a 700 mile trek to Bermuda. And then we ended up scratching that and deciding we'll do the thousand miles to Florida and go to Bermuda in the summer. Well, the funny thing is when we planned this, we then took a year to get ready and provision like, everything we, we took a year and looking back i don't know what we were doing in a full year like how could it take that long like it's like just get in the boat and go like it'll do it for you we were saving up working hard and buying all kinds of equipment that we didn't have before that's some things we were doing in that year that is true we didn't have our wind vane the rain setup, the solar panels, the raft, the raft. Yeah, we, we were missing a lot of gear. That's a good point. But, but still, like, I remember like mentally when we left on our first time, and we were just like hopping down the coast. Oof. It was like had to have everything perfect and ship shape. And now it's like, if it's not done, we'll do it underway. And if we don't do it underway, we'll do it when we get there. And if not, we'll do it at the next port. We're out of the harbor, so. You ready to turn east? I'm ready. Jiving.
Once we pass that lighthouse, we will officially be in the Mediterranean. We're going through the Strait of Gibraltar right now. So the Mediterranean is actually comprised of many seas. It's about 14, depending who's counting. And this first one that we're going into is called the Alboran Sea, I believe is how it's pronounced. Alboran Sea, maybe? Uh, once we're in there, that's the stretch from, like that narrow stretch as you come into the Med between Spain and Africa. And then after that, then we go into the next sea. All right, we're passing the lighthouse. This is it. We're officially in the Med. Woo! <laughs> it's crazy to think that we just entered the Med and we're going to be here for the next year. <laughs> This, these are going to be our home waters for a year. <laughs> the route I have plotted for us to get from here to Sicily is pretty much equidistant from the coast. We're going down current, downwind, and hopefully if, if everything goes well, we won't see land until we see Sicily or the tip of Tunisia. And that's, that's it. So we're going to be what will look like out in the ocean for quite some time in what the Romans called the middle of the known earth. So that's going to be pretty cool. Because Mediterranean actually is Medi for medium, like middle, and Tehrania for earth. Because it was the middle of the known world at the time. actually a really beautiful day for sailing. It's always really nice to leave on a day that has enjoyable sailing. <laughs> there are really only two negatives about this day. Uh, one is that there's quite a bit of weather helm, so since the sails aren't quite balanced, we are having to hand steer, but that's all right. Oh no, we have to steer our bow. <laughs> Uh, and then the other negative is just the cold, but it is supposed to get warmer. We knew this was coming though. Now, Herbie likes to practice his navigation skills with his sextant. So it is about noon right now, so he's going to do a noon sight. It's just a really good thing to keep yourself sharp on this, on uh, navigating with sextant because you never know what's going to go wrong, what's going to go bad, and you never know um, if your electronics are just going to all stop working. So I think it's a great thing that he's kind of sticking with his sextant practice. So about the weather helm, we currently are go we're currently on a run and the sails are flying are a staysail and a full main. So that's why we have weather helm. Now we have two choices. One, we could reef and then we'd be balanced and then Wendy could steer us. But then we'd go slower. Or we can just sit out here and just, you know, hold the, hold the helm, fight the weather helm, and move really fast. We're going about five to six knots. So, oh, and then the last option is put up a really big head sail to kind of counteract the main. But our main is so big that it just blankets and covers the head sail. So then it ends up not really working too well. So, being how we're close to shore, have lots of energy, and it's a beautiful day, we're full main and we're just hand steering. I have assumed my position. I will remain here for the rest of the trip. <laughs> but I made sandwiches. This has been an absolutely beautiful day of sailing. We're just going along, pretty much dead downwind. 
uh, or at a very, very deep broad reach because downwind is actually a very slow point of sail. So if we can bear up into the wind just a smidge, we go a little quicker. So that's what we're doing. But the thing is, it feels so calm out. We have between 10 to 15 knots of apparent wind, but we're doing about five to six knots. So that means it's between 15 to 20 knots of true wind. So it feels calm, but that's just because it's fair winds and following seas, which is a beautiful way to start on this passage. So the sun is setting, which means it's time to set our sail plan for night. And that means less sail, no main, uh, because we're already reefed as it is, and there's still a little bit of weather helm. Wendy is steering us nicely for now, but you never know what's to come. So we're going to Herbie's dropping Monty, our main, right now, and we're going to see how we do under just our staysail. If it's not good enough, then we're going to put up PJ, our trysail. We call him PJ because. He's the boat's pajamas, so at night, PJs are our go-to sail, so that we don't have to worry about uh, accidental jibes or if if any gusts come up, like any trouble for that one person on watch. dinner time on our first day back out and our first day ever in the Mediterranean. We reefed down to our staysail and trysail. We dropped our main and put up our trysail. And when we were done, the wind just completely vanished. But the seas are still here and oh wow, it is just going. So in this, I'm downstairs, I'm trying to prepare some dinner. We're gonna do chicken legs with adobo. in the oven. Left or right? What? Which burner? Oh, I have no idea. I used the left for tea. Yeah. Time. Dinner is now in the oven. chicken didn't like being inside me for very long. It is no longer inside of me. I've got first watch tonight, so I'm eating gummy bears so that if I puke again it tastes like gummy bears. So Maddie's gonna get situated out there and I am gonna get some sleep. So I'll be sleeping in the quarter berth right next to the cockpit. So if she needs help or anything, I can just jump up and be present and be ready. But I also get some really good sleep, which I need because I'm up for second watch. What time is it? Oh, no. 12.30. Yeah, it's really late. Yeah. It's not even that late. It's not. Just, <laughs> we've been up for a long time. 
So, so Maddie's coming off watch, and I'm waking up. Oh, mm. and I'm going on watch. And I'm going to bed. Yep. Maddie hasn't had a good go at the med. It's been really, really choppy and rough. And she's had some issues with that. So, this pretty much ends our day. So we'll see you guys tomorrow with day two. Good night. See you tomorrow. I took Dramamine. Bleh. But thankfully, the island realizes that it's a huge navigational risk, and there are very, very bright lights on it. Herbie's gone out to drop PJ because there's so much weather at home and Wendy can't handle steering. And it goes because the repair that we had done in Pavon broke again in the exact same spot, the exact same way. Surprise! We made it somewhere. We're in a marina. And it's not in <laughs> Sicily. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. And if you'd like to follow our journey in real time on a map, receive postcards from our ports of call, and messages directly to the boat, you can go ahead and become a patron using the link in the description down below.